okay i stopped here discussing the matter related to skewness and the cortices of the distribution and diagrammatically the normal curve can be presented therefore in these ways you know <clears throat> so if you look at these distributions you know i'm considering symmetric distribution every time however i'm considering the leptocortic format the mesocortic format and the platycortic format okay now can anyone tell me what is the meaning of point of inflection what is meant by point of inflection anyone those who had the stat g um uh, f dash equal to 0 and f double dash equal to 0 was tell me what is the meaning of point of inflection yes we will go for that how the point at which the curve changes its curvature very good the points at which the curve changes its curvature you know so that is known as point of inflection so normal curve is first convex then concave and then again convex to the x axis it is first convex concave and then again convex towards the x axis okay so the two points when the curve changes its curvature from convex to concave and then from concave to convex are called the points of inflection are called the points of inflection so please note down point of inflection indicates the points where a curve changes its curvature okay next when we talk about any curvature we have to concentrate on the second order derivative we have to consider the second order derivative okay so the second order derivative will be equal to zero when there is neither convexity nor concavity second order derivative will be equal to zero if there is neither the curve is neither convex or it is concave which means the curve is basically changing its curvature so what we have to do we have to consider the effects of the normal distribution the probability density function of the normal distribution and we have to set the second derivative to be equal to zero because second derivative is equal to zero means the curve neither has the convexity nor has the concavity actually the curve is changing its curvature okay so first we will understand what is meant by points of inflection and then we will derive the points of inflection for the normal distribution okay so you know these are the set of normal curves with same mean and different standard deviation uh, you know for all three the mean value is nothing but mu so the curve is symmetric around the mean however the standard deviation that is the spread of the observations from its mean value that is changing for the variance what we consider x minus expectation of x okay that means the distance of x from its mean value and then we consider square of it and since the probability or the uncertainty is associated with it in that case we put another expectation expected squared difference between the observation and the mean value we take square just to avoid the sign we are not interested about the positive deviation or negative deviation we are only interested about the absolute distance of the point from the central point 
Okay, so we consider x minus expectation of x whole square, the distance of a point from its centrality, you know, and square of it because we are interested only about the absolute distance. And since the variable is random, all these distance, since x is random, all these dis distances has some randomness. So probability is associated with all the squared value of distances. Therefore, we put one more expectation in the front and we write the definition of the variance as expectation of x minus expectation of x whole square. Okay, so while the mean remains fixed at mu, it is possible that looking at the spread of the observations, we can have these three varieties, like leptocotic, you know, as well as platycotic, along with the standard mesocotic pattern of the normal distribution. So for all the cases, the points of inflection is changing, okay? Actually, the value of the point of inflection that will be given by mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma, okay? Mu plus sigma, in this tail, it will be mu plus sigma. In this tail, it will be mu minus sigma. Now, depending on different values of the variances or depending on different values of the standard deviation, you know, this point of inflection will vary. It will be mu plus minus sigma. For example, if it is mu, for if it gets the spread here, you know, if this is the point of inflection, it may be mu plus, you know, seven like thing, you know, mu plus seven like thing. Okay. And here it is almost mu plus 10. Okay. And here it will be mu plus 15. Okay. So it can be, it can take different values. And in this tail, since the distribution is symmetric, we will get the point of inflection at the same, same range only. The thing will be mu minus 5 or mu minus 7 mu minus 10 and mu minus 15. So the points of inflection of the normal distribution is basically given by mean plus minus standard deviation. However, we want to derive this point of inflection. How? We will consider effects of the normal distribution and then we will consider a prime x and then we will derive a double prime x. A prime have, x has no role here. Actually, to derive a double prime x, we are deriving a prime x, nothing else. Okay. So, when a double prime x is equal to zero, we will get the point of inflection of the normal distribution. So, please consider effects of the normal distribution. One by sigma root over two pi e to the power minus half into x minus mu whole square divided by sigma square. So consider any normal distribution. This is the format. Fx is equal to 1 by sigma root over 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by sigma square. Then you have to find out dfx by dx first and then d square fx by dx square. You have to set d square fx by dx square to be equal to 0 to derive the point of inflection. So please do it on your own. Please write down fx in the format, one by sigma root over two pi e to the power minus half, x minus mu whole square divided by sigma square. And then derive dfx by dx. x is there only in the power of e. So please derive dfx by dx first. Remember, e to the power something will remain as e to the power something. And then I have minus half into x minus mu whole squared by sigma squared. So from there, you will get an expression for x. So are you doing the things? 
Ma'am, can you show me the slide before? Yes, ma'am. This one? No, ma'am. The previous slide. In previous slide, there is no calculation regarding inflation. So no, look at this. Okay. To look at the diagram, ma'am. First, you divide this. Everybody is doing? Yes, ma'am. E to the power x, when you are taking the derivative, remains e to the power x. However, it is minus half divided, minus half, then 1 upon sigma square into x minus mu whole square. So from x part, you will get some expression. Once you get the first derivative, please let me know. Calculate only a prime x. Mom, I have got the first derivative. Who are you? Upanita. Um, uh, 1 by sigma uh, root 2 pi e to the power uh, minus half in brackets x minus mu by sigma whole square into okay. minus 1 into x minus mu by sigma into 1 by sigma. Okay, let me write, you know, and that will be easier for, you know. Panita, please tell me the value. Yes, ma'am. 1 by sigma into root 2 pi e to the power minus half into x minus mu by x minus mu by sigma whole square into minus 1 into x minus mu by sigma. into 1 by sigma. Please check whether other people are getting the same. Two is cancelled, you know, since it is x minus mu whole square, so it will be 2 into x minus mu, so 2, 2 will be cancelled, and we will get minus 1. Anyone else could complete? Yes, ma'am, same. Ma yes, ma'am, same. Okay. Obhivsha, Anandarupa got the values? Anurag? Yes, ma'am. 
Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Got it. Not the same. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Aryan. Aryan. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ayon. Yes, ma'am. Got the value. Got the same. Yes, ma'am. Deepika Gunjuri. Yes, ma'am. Rajoshi. Yes, yes. ma'am. I got the same answer. Okay, Rajdeep. Rauna. Yes, ma'am. Simran and Shobhato, could you do it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Kampiti. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So we are getting this format. So from that expression, can we write the thing in this way? Because we will go for u into v format. Yes, ma'am. So since you got the same expression, so I hope everybody can write the expression as minus x minus mu into one upon sigma cube. Okay, so sigma cube root over two pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole squared by two sigma square. So next we will consider the expression as u into v format. So I'll consider minus x into one upon sigma cube root over two pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole squared by two sigma square, and I'll consider plus mu the other thing. Okay, so I'll, I'm breaking it into two parts: minus x into rest of the expression, then plus mu into rest of the expressions. Okay, now from the minus x into rest of the expression, I'm writing the thing as minus x. One by sigma cube root over two pi e to the power this entire expression, and we have here minus two into x minus mu by two sigma square. So into minus two into x minus mu by two sigma square. Two to cancelled. Then we will take the derivative with respect to x. I have x into this expression. Okay, so itself it is u into v format. So first, I am keeping x constant and taking derivative of the rest. Then I'll take the derivative with respect to x. So minus one. Rest of the things will remain unchanged. One by sigma cube root over two pi e to the power minus half x minus mu whole squared by sigma square. Then we are going for the third part, where I have plus mu into this. So plus mu into mu by sigma cube root over two pi. Then I am deriv taking derivative of this part e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by two sigma square into the same expression. So minus x minus mu by sigma square. So please check everything. 
there are two u into v. First, I'm writing the expression as sorry, one u into v. Writing the expression as minus x into this. That is u into v format. Then plus mu into this. So we are basically getting. We'll get three expressions when we will check the derivative. So please check everything perfectly. Once you get the expression, set d square fx dx square is equal to zero, and try to find out the value of x. Once you get this expression, you have to find out the value of x. Setting d square fx by dx square is equal to zero. So once you could complete the second derivative, please inform me. If you get something else, then also please inform me. Could complete it. Everybody could complete it. Yes, ma'am. This derivative is okay, and you are getting the same. I'm setting d square f x by d x square is equal to zero because I will like to find out the value of x. I hope you are understanding e to the power, in fact, one by sig sigma cube root over two pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by two sigma square is common. This is common. So please take this common. Please take minus. One upon sigma cube root over two pi e to the power x minus x minus mu whole square by two sigma square common. Then put a square back bracket. From the first term, we are getting x into minus x minus mu. Actually, this is plus. Only this one is minus, so you don't need to take minus sign common. Just cancel that. Take one by sigma cube root over two pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by two sigma square common. So you are left with square bracket. Then you are left with x into x minus mu by sigma square. From the second term, what you are getting within square bracket? Minus one plus uh, minus one. Okay. From the second term, we are getting minus one. So write down minus one. And from the third term, yes, Kritika, what we are getting? Mu 
and uh, minus x minus mu over sigma square. Yes, this part. The last part. This part. The last part. Okay. Since the other part, that is 1 by sigma cube root over 2 pi e to the power minus x minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square cannot be equal to 0. The rest of the things you are getting within the square bracket, that will be equal to 0. And from there, please solve the value for x. Ma'am, uh, mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. Yes, it will be mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. Very good. Please mention since the other part is not equal to zero. You can write x into x minus mu by sigma square minus one minus mu into x minus mu by sigma square equal to zero. And from there, I'm bringing one to the right hand side. So I have I, I, I'll get x into x minus mu by sigma square minus mu into x minus mu by sigma square from the two terms I'm taking x minus mu by sigma square common. So I'm left with another x minus mu so I can write x minus mu whole square by sigma square is equal to one or x minus mu is equal to plus minus. Sigma. So x value is nothing but mu plus minus sigma. So these are the two points of inflection for the normal distribution, mu plus sigma and mu minus sigma. These are the two points of inflection for the normal distribution. So everybody is getting this. Any problem, any question, any query, or any critical situation you are facing? Everybody could complete this, yes or no? Still few people are doing it. I'm done. Rest. It's okay. Please open your audio and let me know whether you could complete it. Yes. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Um, now, can you show me the slide? Yes. Um, and the one before this. This was this I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here the spread is varying, and accordingly the sigma value is varying okay so points of inflection though the we have a constant mean mu point of inflection is changing depending on the value of sigma depending on value of sigma the point of inflection is changing so next we will derive the mode of the normal distribution, mode of the normal distribution. Now for a continuous distribution, mode is the expression 
where you know we will get the highest probability okay we we will get the highest probability mode is the expression where we will get the highest probability which means we have to set dfx by dx is equal to 0 at the maximum if i say that this is the particular value of x where fx is maximum if fx is maximum that means the first derivative is equal to 0 okay the first derivative is equal to zero by the first order condition okay so first please add mod is the typical value where the pdf where the pdf probability density function will be will will take its will take its maximum value will take its maximum value thus by foc thus by first order condition we may set dfx by dx is equal to 0 then already dfx by dx is with you set that equal to 0 and find the value of the mode again don't forget to mention that since rest of the terms or write down the rest of the things apart from x minus mu in your expression is not equal to zero you are setting x minus mu to be equal to zero and from there you are getting x to be exactly equal to mu and this proves for a normal distribution mean is equal to mod actually it's a symmetric distribution and for that matter mean will be exactly equal to median is equal to mod of the distribution Can you repeat the implication? Huh? And can you repeat the implication again? Implication uh, means you know what is meant by mode? Yes. Not getting. Yes, ma'am. Mode is that particular value of x where effects or the probability will be maximum. Thus, we said. dfx by dx is equal to 0 following the first order condition of any maximization we are maximizing fx we are maximizing the probability fx so what we will do we will consider dfx by dx and we will set that equal to 0 so we are getting this expression is equal to 0 then i am telling that Minus one by sigma root over two pi e to the power minus half x minus mu whole square by sigma square into one by sigma square cannot be equal to zero, and for that matter, only x minus mu can be equal to zero, and from there we are getting x is equal to mu. Done. Everybody, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anyone? Any other question? Now we to understand it is really maximum what we generally do. we consider the second order derivative 
and we check whether at x is equal to mu that should be less than zero or not. So expression is with you d square f x by d x square already you derived. So you can put that expression here and then set equal to x set x is equal to mu and please check whether you are getting something which is negative. So already d square f x by d x square is with you. Write down the value. Set x is equal to mu. And check whether you are getting minus 1 upon sigma cube root pi. Sigma cube is positive, so that root 2 pi. So if you get minus this, it will be negative. It will be really negative. Which indicates at x is equal to mu, fx becomes maximum. Please inform me once you complete this. Complete. If you can complete at the end, please write down thus or therefore fx is maximum at x is equal to mu. Therefore, fx is maximum at x is equal to mu. Should I move to next slide or you are still doing this thing? No, I'm done. Some more students, you know, could you complete this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, I'm talking about standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution. Okay. Look at the expression tau. This is tau. Tau is equal to x minus mu by sigma is called the standard or standardized variable. So what is a standardized variate from the value of the variable? I have to subtract the mean and divide it by standard error. If for any observation, I subtract the mean and divide it by standard deviation is called a standardized variate or standard variate. Okay, so for a normal distribution, if I want to find out the standard normal distribution, what I'll do, I'll consider, you know, x minus mu by sigma as z or tau. And then I'll write down the probability density function for that tau. So I have written phi, sorry, shy tau. I have written shy tau, a function of tau. Now, what is the standard formula for the normal distribution? 
it is given by f of x is given by 1 upon sigma root over 2 pi e to the power minus half into x minus mu by sigma whole square. So now this x minus mu by sigma that is as equal to tau. So we are getting e to the power minus half tau square. Okay. Now for a standard normal distribution mu is equal to 0 and sigma is equal to 1. Okay. So we put sigma value to be equal to 1 and we write the expression as 1 by root over 2 pi. So for the standard normal distribution, we write the function. Here we are considering psi tau will be given by 1 upon root 2 pi e to the power minus minus tau square by 2. So this will be the expression. For a standard normal distribution, mu is set at 0 along the number line, minus infinity to plus infinity is the range. Mu in that case is set at 0. Okay. So, and the standard deviation is 1. The standard deviation is 1. Mu is 0, standard deviation is 1. Okay. Now here, I have given an example, okay, so if I consider uh, body mass index here, body mass index is normally distributed across age groups, say. Body mass index is normally distributed across different age group, okay, so in that case, you know, if I consider BMI value to be equal to 30, just after this, I consider X is equal to 30. We are getting mean is 29 and standard deviation is 6. Okay. Now, when we convert these in terms of the Z score, it becomes the same bell shaped kind of curve. However, the mean changes from 29 to 0, okay, and if I calculate Z score, that will be, you know, X minus 29 divided by 26. That is 13, 30 minus 29 divided by 6. 30 minus 29 divided by 6. That means 1 by 6, 1 by 6, this will be the value. The red dotted line is giving the Z score, you know, and the value is 0 0.17, say, 0 0.17. Okay, so in this way, from the normal, we can move towards the standard normal, okay, standardized variate, standard normal. So many a times we do all these things, you know, uh, Actually, there may be many positive deviation, negative deviation, making the value minus, you know. Then what we do, we consider the standardization of the variate to adjust all these problems. You know? When we work with the real life data to adjust the variability of the data, we normalize the values and the normalization process is done considering x minus mu by sigma format and if i present the normal distribution in the with the standardized value of x it will give the expression 1 by root over 2 pi e to the power minus tau squared by 2 with mu 0 and sigma 1. next is how we will calculate the area under the curve for a typical zone okay for a normal distribution 
how we will calculate the area under the curve in between say a and b where a and b are any arbitrary number okay so we next we are learning how to calculate the area under the curve within a specific range so let's let's first try to understand the diagram okay so this is the normal distribution this is a normal bell shaped curve and i have any value a here and any value b here i have to calculate the area under the range a and b so i need to calculate you know this part so i need to calculate this area so how we can do this i have to calculate the area starting from minus infinity to b and then i have to calculate the area starting from minus infinity to a so i'll be able to calculate integration minus infinity to b i'll be able to calculate integration minus infinity to a fx dx and then subtracting this part you know integration you know subtracting this part from the whole part you know that is from minus infinity to b i'll be able to calculate this part so i have to take the area starting from minus infinity to b then i have to take the area minus infinity to a if i subtract the second area from the first area then i am getting the area in between that the all the distribution is only right continuous okay so we cannot do it from other direction so from the very left the most left position i have to come up to certain point i have to take the calculation for that to get the area then again from the most left point or left most point i'll come up to another point and we'll get the area once we get two areas i'll subtract and i'll get the area in between two points so mathematically what we are doing i am considering probability x less than equal to b so greater area first i am considering probability of x less than equal to b graphically you know probability of x less than equal to b so this red shaded area first i am calculating minus probability of x less than equal to a so then i am considering the blue shaded area probability that fx is lying in between minus infinity to a sorry so x less than equal to a then i am standardizing the values because the normal table is given only in terms of standardized value if i look at the table for the normal distribution so from today we have to know how to check the tables later we have to check the tables for t distribution chi square distribution f distribution so one by one we will learn all these things and all these matters will come in our analysis okay so first we are starting with the normal distribution so what we have to do we have to standardize the variate so i am writing x as x minus mu by sigma so i have to adjust the right hand side as well so i am writing b minus mu by sigma minus x minus mu by sigma less than equal to a minus mu by sigma so this we can write as capital phi capital phi means cumulation the area capital phi up to b minus mu by sigma uh, minus capital phi up to a minus mu by sigma so capital phi between the two standardized variates where phi dot indicates the cumulative probability so i am talking about the distribution now area under the curve to the left 
of the certain point. So actually I'm coming up to B minus mu by sigma and calculating the area. I'm coming up to A minus mu by sigma and calculating the area. In other words, probability x less than or equal to k is given by this phi k. That is probability up to certain point, which is equivalent to minus infinity to k, minus infinity to certain value k, small phi of x dx. Small phi indicates probability function. Capital phi indicates the distribution function. Capital phi indicates the area. Small phi indicates probability at a point. So small phi is equivalent to capital F. Sorry, capital phi is equivalent to capital F. Whereas small phi is equivalent to small F. Okay, so in this way, we will be able to find out area under the curve between A and B. Or, you know, I'll be able to solve the numerical exercises to find out the probability of x so that x is less than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this, x lies in between these two values. So all these things we will be able to calculate. Any question? Is this graph okay to all of you? Is this okay to all of you? Yes, ma'am. You know, since we are talking about the area before going to solving the numerical exercises, you know, this is the chart for a normal table. It is found that below mu my plus minus two sigma there will be only the area 0 0.02 below mu minus 2 sigma 0 0.02 below or above sorry above mu plus 2 sigma the value is 0 0.02 so only the two percent observations will lie above the range mu plus minus 2 sigma only two percent <coughs> not two sorry 0 0.02 means 20 percent. Am I right? What is 0 0.02? What percentage is it? Two percent. <coughs> yes. Only two percent of the observations will lie below and above plus minus two sigma, mu plus minus two sigma, okay? Then if you consider the range between mu minus two sigma and mu minus sigma, that will be only 0.14. Mu minus sigma and mu 0.34 mu and mu plus sigma 0.34. So most of the observations will lie in between the range mu plus minus sigma. Okay. If you consider mu plus minus two sigma, then you are covering in fact most of the observations. It is found that probability that a normal variate will lie outside the range mu plus minus three sigma is only 0 0.0027. Thus mu plus minus three sigma is called the effective range for the normal distribution. Okay, so we don't need to go beyond mu plus minus three sigma. Mu plus minus three sigma is called the effective range of the normal distribution only 0 0.0027, you know, percent values will be there outside the range mu plus minus three sigma. Okay. Next, we will consider some numerical exercise to find out the value of x. So first tell me before going to this, is this fine to all of you? Is there any problem?
it's okay yes okay next estimate the following probability following probabilities for a normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma square with mu is equal to 2 and sigma is equal to 4 estimate the following probabilities for a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square with mu is equal to 2 and sigma is equal to 4 so how we will do this for probability x greater than equal to 5 we have to find out probability that x is greater than equal to 5 so that will be equal to probability x minus first i am standardizing so x minus 2 by 4 x minus mu by sigma greater than equal to 5 minus mean by sigma so 5 minus 2 by 4 this we call tau or z score tau or this is equivalent to z score so we can write we replace x minus 2 by 4 by z probability z greater than equal to if i solve this this is 3 by 4 okay since the distribution is right continuous actually this is suppose if this is 3 by 4 you have to calculate this area okay however you will be not able to calculate this because the distribution is right continuous and you have to move from minus infinity up to this so you have to calculate the area for the zone okay the total area under minus infinity to plus infinity is 1 if normal distribution or the standard normal distribution is a probability density function the total area between minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1 so what i'll do 1 minus this bigger area starting from minus infinity to infinity up to this that we will consider the area i'll consider and we will get the shaded region so in this way i have to solve for greater than equal to sign here i am trying to find out the area above 3 by 4 so directly we will be not able to calculate total area minus area previous to 3 by 4 we have to consider and then only we will get the area above 3 by 4 okay so probability z greater than equal to 3 by 4 means you have to calculate 1 minus probability z less than equal to 3 by 4 that means you need to calculate 1 minus capital phi 0.75 now this value you will get from statistical table okay this value you will get from statistical table use the statistical table which is given behind gungupta dasgupta that is a perfect statistical table in certain books the tables are given in such a way so that you have to make an adjustment of you know taking uh, some adjustment in terms of mean etc so don't go for ngdas type table please go with gungupta dasgupta type table okay so gungupta dasgupta type table is perfect so look at that table and check how the values are given in the table how the values are given in the table okay and find out the value of capital phi at 0.75 
and next day tell me what is the value once you can check the table get the value i'll put one minus that value and we'll find out what is probability of x greater than or equal to five if mean is two and standard deviation is four any question ma'am it's point three zero one one okay i need to check you know i don't have table at this moment with me okay just give one minute let me bring gundukta dasgupta and let me check Seven five. Chow is at point five zero. Okay. Table is up to point five zero, and then we are taking one point five one, etc. So, what you are telling? What is the value? Ma'am, point three zero one one. How you are getting this? I am using a table only, but not the Gun Gupta one from a different book. Point seven, point seven five, capital five tau is. Point seven seven double three seven two six. Capital Phi Tau at point seven five is point seven seven three three seven two six. And what is your value? Point three zero one one. Like Phi at point. Small Phi. Yes, ma'am. That is small phi. One one is the small phi. That is the probability value, and we have to check the capital phi value. Just after small phi, we have capital phi values. So in the table, you will get the arrangement like this. First, you will get the value for tau. Then you will get the values for small phi of tau. Which is the probability value? Then only will get the value of capital phi of tau. So this is the table arrangement. So you have to look at the capital phi values for these numerical exercises because you don't want to find out the probability for the value point seven five. Rather, you want to find out the area under the curve up to point seven five. Now, Upanita, are you getting the value? I am telling you. Point seven seven double three seven two six, roughly point seven seven. I am checking the table. One second. Other students, do you have these tables with you? Or Gun Gupta, yes, Das Gupta, yes. with you? Yes. Are you getting the value point seven seven? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. You can consider up to two decimal place. So the value is point seven seven. I am requesting other students, you know, to check or to have a Xerox of. Gun Gupta Das Gupta table, and you know use that table. So everybody has Gun Gupta Das Gupta, or few people have Gun Gupta Das Gupta. Few people have do not access to this book. What is the matter? Would you please tell me? No, I don't have Gun Gupta. I mean, in hard copy, I don't have. In soft copy, it's pretty tough to get. 
সফট কপি থাকলে তো প্রিন্ট আউট নিতে পারবে ওই পেজেস গুলো তাই না হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ মানে ওটা পাওয়া যায় কি কেবলটা সেপারেটলি यस मैम नो टेबल दे विल नॉट गेट सेपरेटली यू नो स्टैटिस्टिकल टेबल इज देयर কিন্তু সেগুলো আজকাল আর পাওয়া যায় না কলেজ স্ট্রিটে मैम অনলাইন আছে গুগল এ অনলাইন আছে তাহলে প্লিজ কেউ একটা ডাউনলোড করে গুগল ক্লাসে একটু প্লিজ দিয়ে দাও হ্যাঁ গুনগুটা টাইপ টেবিলটা কিনা একটু চেক করে নিয়ে প্লিজ গিভ ইট টু ইওর গুগল ক্লাস পোস্ট ইট ইন দা গুগল ক্লাস সো বডি এভরিবডি ক্যান অ্যাক্সেস ইট ओके नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इन बिटवीन द रेंज माइनस 2 टू प्लस 2 फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इन द रेंज इन बिटवीन माइनस 2 टू प्लस 2 सो व्हाट आई एम डूइंग प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स लेस देन बी द हाईएस्ट वैल्यू minus probability of x less than minus 2 so that will give me the value in between minus 2 and plus 2 so if this is a normal curve you know suppose this is 2 this is minus 2 and i like to find out the area in between this two so what i am doing i am considering the area from minus infinity up to plus 2 then i'll consider the area between minus infinity to minus 2 subtract the area minus infinity to minus 2 from the area minus infinity to plus 2 and get the value in between minus 2 and plus 2. So I'm putting the matter in this way. I'll consider the area up to 2 minus, I'll consider the area up to minus 2. Then I'm standardizing x minus 2 by 4, 2 minus 2 by 4 minus x minus 2 by 4, less than minus 2 minus 2 by 4. So z less than 0 minus z less than minus 1. So in terms of standard normal or standardized variate, we have to find out the area in between minus 1 and 0, you know, or 0. I have to consider the area up to minus 1 and I have to calculate the area up to 0. So in between 0 and minus 1, we have to do something. So since both the things are given in less than sign, so directly we can write it as phi 0 and phi of minus 1. If the sign is greater than, then I have to write 1 minus because I cannot calculate the area to the right. I can calculate the area only to the left of certain point. Now here, both are giving the indication of left. So capital phi of 0 minus capital phi of minus 1. Okay. Now the table is giving only the value to the positive direction. It is not giving the value to the negative direction. As the distribution is symmetric, as the areas will be same, the table is starting with the positive values only. It is not giving us the negative values. So what I'll do I'll keep phi 0 as phi 0 minus capital phi of minus 1, if it is minus 1, capital phi of minus 1 is equal to 1, that is whole area, minus capital phi of 1. So if I consider the whole area and then subtract the area of to phi is equal to 1, I'll get the area to the left of minus 1. Okay, so graphically let us understand this is minus 1. This is minus 1. I have to find out the area uh, 
up to this, up to minus one. So what I'm doing, since the table is not giving the values in terms of minus values, so what I'm doing, I'm considering the whole area, that is one, minus, I am subtracting the area, you know, up to one. Whole area minus subtracting the area up to one, this point. So I'll do that. So I'll get the area this, which is above one. Since the distribution is symmetric, the area above one will be exactly equal to area below minus one. So we will get the area below minus one then. So phi of minus something, phi of minus k is equal to one minus phi k. Phi of minus k is equal to one minus phi k. So applying this, finally we are getting phi zero plus phi one minus one. Then from the table, we will get the value of phi zero. We will get the value of phi one and we will get probability that x is lying between minus two and two. So since now many of you have tables, would you please check and tell me the value of phi zero? And in general, what will be phi zero? If the total area is one, what will be phi zero? What will be the area between minus infinity to zero or zero to infinity? Half. Anyone? I didn't get you. Ma'am, point five. Point five. Half the area should be point five. Capital phi of zero means I'm considering the area between zero to infinity. Okay. So what will be the value? Point five. If the whole area is one. If I consider the middlemost point and move up to infinity, that should be nothing but 0.5. So capital for capital phi zero, we don't even need to check the table. It will be 0 0.5. Plus, what will be the value of phi one? 0.84. 0 0.84. Very good. then solve it and find the value of p. 0 0.34. 0 point? 0.34. Okay. So in this way, we will be able to find out the values for the normal distribution. Okay, so these are the types of the numerics which comes from the normal and the standard normal part and rest of the things are the theory thing as we discussed in this class. Can, can you show the page where the sum is written again? Uh, I didn't get you. Ma'am, can you this show? One? Yes. Okay, so next day we will derive the moment generating function for the normal distribution and using moment generating function, we will be able to derive the expectation and variance of the normal distribution. So Tuesday, we will do that and whatever numerical exercises you are finding difficult and you, you will be not able to solve, we will discuss it in the class. All relevant exercises will be discussed in the class. Okay. So if we can complete the moment generating function for the normal distribution, our syllabus for the random variable will be finished. And then we will discuss 
the numerical exercises once again. First October, I am not taking classes. However, I'll take class on 4th October. And, you know, uh, then we will have the exam on 8th October. Any question, anything? Ma'am, the syllabus for the 8th October is, is still uh, discrete or continuous is also there? Uh, since we will be able to complete everything by next day, 27th, so I think uh, there is no problem if we can keep the